Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be a lecture on creating a lesson plan. The learning objectives for the Creating a Lesson Plan unit are number one, write measurable objectives for a training program. Number two, write learning objectives that use Bloom's taxonomy to classify learning from the simplest to the most complex. Number three, write learning objectives that are tied to needs analysis. Number four, select appropriate activities for training objectives. And number five, Construct a lesson plan using appropriate instructional approaches tied to the needs analysis. Lesson planning is an important core skill for teachers and trainers, yet many skip this step. This skill will take time to master, but the result will be that your courses and lessons will be better organized and implementation will go more smoothly. Better organization leads to more effective teaching and in turn greater learning. The lesson plan will provide a pathway toward the attainment of the selected learning objectives. It will be your guide to answering the questions, what are my goals for this lesson, and what do I have to do in class to achieve these goals. This is also the time that teachers can show their creativity, and over time, lessons will be more interesting and delivered with confidence. Writing lesson plans does not have to be difficult. In this unit, we will look at a systematic process to prepare a lesson plan that will help ensure success. There are three main steps in preparing a lesson plan. In step one, the topic and content to be covered are defined. Step two lists the instructional goals, learning objectives, and materials. And in step three, the instructional and evaluation procedures are planned. Let's say the goal is to prepare a lesson for intake personnel on the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability HIPAA, Privacy and Security rules with a focus on the new EHR. All that's known so far is the content area to be covered in this lesson. But this information says nothing about what students will know and what the learner is expected to do after instruction. For this information, we need to write learning objectives. Learning objectives define specific, observable, and measurable learning outcomes. What about the HIPAA rules should they know? How will they demonstrate this has been learned? And how will you measure that learning has occurred? Before we go any further, we should discuss the difference between goals and objectives. These two concepts are often confused. Goals are broad generalized statements about what students will gain from instruction over an entire course or curriculum. But in order to better describe what kind of work is expected in the course and to more easily design assessment, more specific statements of what the learner must do are desirable. Therefore, objectives are specific statements describing what the learner will know or be able to do as a result of engaging in a learning activity. Here are some examples of each. A goal for this unit you are currently taking is, students will learn how to write lesson plans. This tells you why you are taking this unit, but it does not give any information about the specific skills you need to write lesson plans and will gain by completing this lesson. Here's an actual objective for this lesson. Students will be able to write measurable objectives for a training program. Objectives are useful for a number of reasons. By plotting where you intend to go, you increase the chance of you and the learner ending up there. Guides the teacher. Helps with the preparation of assessment tools to measure student achievement. Guides the learner. Helps him or her focus and set priorities. Allows for analysis in terms of the levels of teaching and learning. Let's focus in on how an objective is constructed. A well-written objective statement provides a clear picture of the outcome or performance expected as a result of the lesson. It should be specific, concise, and measurable. An objective statement has three parts, the behavior, the condition, and the standard. The behavior describes what the students will be able to do and verbs that are specific and observable should be used. The condition under which the behavior is to be completed should be stated, including what tools or assistance is to be provided, and the standard indicates the level of performance that is desirable should be stated including an acceptable range of answers that are allowable as correct. Consider the following objective. Given a normal clinical environment and using the new EHR, intake staff will be able to accurately create an electronic chart for all new patients. This example describes the observable behavior. Create electronic chart, the conditions, 
clinical environment and the new EHR, and the standard, all new patients. Often, learning objectives ignore the conditions and standards. When omitted, it is assumed that the conditions involve normal workplace conditions, and standards are set at perfection. This is usually acceptable, but written indication of the behavior using measurable or observable verbs must always be included. To find measurable and observable verbs, we refer to learning taxonomies such as Bloom's. In the cognitive domain, Bloom's taxonomy identified and defined levels of mental skills from the lowest level of simple recall of facts through increasingly more complex mental activities. There are six major categories. An added benefit is that you can use the hierarchy to help you chunk your modules and focus teaching to target the domains and levels of learning. We can group the six levels learning into three categories. Level one is recall. Recall objectives are at lowest level and involve recall or description of information. The next level up is interpretation and involves application and examination of knowledge. Level three or problem solving skills test the highest level of learning and involve construction and assessment of knowledge. The following verbs can be used to describe observable recall behaviors. This first set of verbs describes knowledge, the remembering of previously learned material. Defines, describes, identifies, knows, labels, lists, matches, names, outlines, recalls, recognizes, reproduces, selects, states. This next set of verbs can be used to describe comprehension, the ability to grasp the meaning of the material. Converts, defends, distinguishes, estimates, explains, extends, generalizes, gives an example, infers, interprets, paraphrases, predicts, rewrites, summarizes, translates. Here's an example of an objective that targets the recall level of learning. After attending HIPAA workshop, the student will state the policy on patient confidentiality. The following verbs can be used to describe observable interpretation skills. These verbs are used to describe application, the ability to use learned material in new situations, applies, changes, computes, constructs, demonstrates, discovers, manipulates, modifies, operates, predicts, prepares, produces, relates, shows, solves, uses. This next set of verbs can be used to describe analysis, the ability to break down material into its component parts. Analyzes, compares, contrasts, diagrams, deconstructs, differentiates, distinguishes, identifies, illustrates, infers, outlines, relates, selects, separates. To target interpretation skills, this objective might work. After attending HIPAA workshop, the student will state the policy on patient confidentiality. And lastly, here are verbs you can use for problem-solving skills. The first group are used to describe synthesis, the ability to put parts together to form a new whole. Categorizes, combines, complies, composes, creates, devises, designs, explains, generates, modifies, organize, plans, rearranges, reconstructs, relates, reorganizes, revises, rewrites, summarizes, tells, writes. And this final set is used to describe evaluation, the ability to judge the value of learned material. Appraises, compares, concludes, contrasts, criticizes, critiques, defends, describes, discriminates, evaluates, explains, interprets, justifies, relates, summarizes, supports. A suitable problem-solving objective is, after attending the new EHR training, the student will modify procedures to accommodate a patient without insurance.
Let's consider this example of a task analysis. The objective here is for the learner to be able to accurately register a new patient in the electronic health record. Often trainers use vague, non-specific, non-measurable verbs to describe behaviors. These should be avoided. These are the most common offenders. Able to, shows interest in, has knowledge of, capable of, learns, memorizes, conscious of, understands, familiar with. Avoid these verbs at all costs. To summarize, after you write objectives, check them against these three questions. Does the objective focus on student performance? Is the task measurable or observable? What criteria will I use to establish that the objective has been reached? Another check should be made against your needs analysis results. Well-conducted organizational, learner, job, task, and instructional analyses should lead directly to the specific skills and knowledge that a training should target. Checking against the results will ensure that nothing was omitted. We'll look at how you would use the result needs analysis to help write objectives, but returning to a previous example. In this example, the task analysis defined the tasks in accurately registering a new patient the electronic health record. This diagram illustrates a step-by-step -step process that defines that learning. The three main tasks are collect patient information, verify patient insurance, schedule appointment. And these tasks are further broken down into subtasks. If you were developing a training session on intake tasks, your training would have to consider these low-level procedural tasks. But you may also want to include content to answer the following questions. If you are training staff to work in the emergency room, what special protocols exist for when there is an emergency and the triage is flooded with new patients? Or, how do HIPAA privacy and confidentiality affect the patient registration process? Factors such as communicating with a patient in a public setting, computer screen orientation, logging out when leaving the computer terminal. These are all examples of some higher level knowledge and skills required to ensure that the job tasks are completed adequately. So they would have to be included in the training session. For your lesson on these intake tasks, you may write the following learning objectives. Recall the steps of the intake process. Assist patients who have incomplete information. Select the appropriate registration protocol given the intake environment. Apply HIPAA regulations to the registration process. Create a materials list and add to this as you write your procedure so that you know exactly what you will need for your class to run smoothly. Prepare your PowerPoint presentation Select and prepare your handouts and make copies. What about the physical space? Do you need computers? Make sure the AV equipment works and software is installed on computers. Do you need additional personnel to assist you? The actual lesson should be broken up into some discrete parts that progress through the steps of introducing new content, allowing for practice and reinforcement of learning, followed by assessment. The steps are Introduction Focusing event. Development. Modeling, explanation, demonstration. Practice. Guided, monitored activity. Independent practice. Assignments to measure progress. Checking for understanding. Assessment, feedback. Closure. Wrapping it up. Determine how you will introduce the lesson. You may want to use this time to introduce the objectives of this lesson and to set up your expectation for the learners. Decide the methods you will use to teach the content of your lesson. Will you lecture, have small or whole group discussions? Sometimes it may be best to use a combination of these methods, beginning with a couple minutes of lecture, followed by a discussion to ensure that the students understand what you have taught them. You should plan and select the most appropriate approach for students to achieve each outcome. The instructional approaches chosen for one learning outcome may be different from the approaches selected for other outcomes in the same lesson. For example, if students are to gain skill in performing a certain task, one of the activities should be practicing in performing the task. If the desired outcome is knowledge, 
Students should observe, listen, or read so they can relate what they are learning to their own experience. If students must learn to apply a principle, the instructor should ask them to solve problems or perform tasks requiring an application of that principle. Determine how you will have the students practice the skill or information you just taught them. For example, if you have taught them about the HIPAA rules, you will have them practice this with problem sets independently, or role playing groups or some other cooperative project. These are a few of many possibilities. How will you know whether your course is effective? You will need to gather some evidence of their learning, and this is usually done by administering some kind of formal assessment and assigning grades to learners. If you choose this method, you will need to create a grading rubric based on lesson objectives. If you have written specific, observable objectives, it will be easy to turn this into questions for your assessments. You also turn some classroom activities into tests, but expect learners to complete them this time without assistance. For workplace training, it may be necessary and appropriate to design assessments to measure workplace performance after training. Use the last few minutes of the class to assign homework or plan for the next session. This slide shows a simple lesson plan with two objectives from our list. The first objective, recall the steps of the intake process, uses two teaching materials, a PowerPoint presentation and a handout of the intake workflow for a specific clinic. The instructional procedures column suggests that the trainer do an introduction to the intake process and explain why patient confidentiality is important. After the introduction, the trainer presents the lecture using the PowerPoint presentation and then distributes a self-test quiz so the student can test their knowledge. The suggested time for these actives is 15 minutes. The second objective covered in this lesson is apply HIPAA regulations to the registration process. The materials used are a video of the patient registration process in a busy clinical setting and a flipboard and markers for each group of students. The students are divided into small groups and asked to identify patient privacy methods and procedures they saw in the video. The groups of students then share their results. This activity should take 30 minutes. In this example, each objective has a unique set of materials and instructional procedures, but often you will have multiple objectives sharing the same materials and procedures. Remember to select the most appropriate materials and methods based on the verb in the learning objective. Follow this link to see an example of another lesson plan template. http colon slash slash nwlink dot com slash tilde don clark slash hrd slash templates slash lesson plan dot rtf We've discussed the importance of lesson planning and how the quality of your lesson planning will affect the quality of the learner experience and the instructional results. But, even though you have spent hours developing and perfecting your lessons, during class time you should be flexible enough to adapt to unexpected events as they can and will occur. But some of the best results will come from spontaneous, unplanned events, and you should be alert and flexible enough to respond to them to use them to your learner's benefit. In any event, you should incorporate them when you are in your planning for your next lesson. Students then share their results. This act.